Anybody doing anything special for the Super Bowl? Watching the, watching the Chiefs win. Good. <laughs> Wanna, okay, so we're live now. We're good now. So the time is now shortly after 9 o'clock. And I want to welcome everyone to the ACA Virtual Coffee now with a little motivation. So that little motivation will be the aspect that I'll be bringing to the table because I feel like every one of you guys that I've seen the last couple of times I've been here, I'm like, you know what? These are a group of positive, amazing, business-minded, entrepreneurial people. And these kind of people I want to be around. So I'm really grateful you guys taking time out of your day to be a part of this. And right now, um, what we're going to do every week is we will have a featured speaker. And what I will be doing is I'll be accessing people that's here in town. I know some people in California, people in Michigan. And really, I feel like starting off our work week with something empowering, something uplifting kind of sets the tone for our entire week. Like the, the secret, as they say, is that the way you win tomorrow is by winning today. You know, you win tomorrow today. So what you do today sets you up for tomorrow. What you do today sets you up for this entire week. You see? So some people go to the mindset that, oh, when things will be better next time or next week or whatever it is. No, you have to create it today and we're going to intentionalize that way out. So the person that we have as our speaker today, I'll give a brief little introduction of her. And the brief little introduction I'm giving her is she's, she's Wonder Woman herself. I'll just leave it at that. You know, I'm, I'll take on the role as Batman, but she's Wonder Woman. So before we go into that, we're going to go into breakout rooms. And then in our breakout rooms, I want us to really focus on networking, connecting, but also asking questions to get to know each other as people. Okay. I'm the kind of person where I, I for me, business, business entrepreneurship was the last thing. Like in a very, it was the last thing for me in the beginning. For, I, I was just a good person. I just loved connecting with new people just for fun. So now us as entrepreneurs, let's go back to, let's be entrepreneurs, but also let's just meet people just for the fun of it. I mean, people are fun, <laughs> you know? So I think that's really, really important that we take the time to um, connect with one another. So I'm about to create our breakout rooms now. And in our breakout rooms, we'll have 10 minutes. Each person will speak about themselves with like their name, where they from, what do they do for work, what do they do for a living? And then also speak a little bit about what gifts do they want to give the world or you know, what impact would they like to have on society? You know, instead of getting had a little bit of heart to it. So I'm going to create the rooms now. All right. And there we go. Get up a little bit. All right, making sure everyone's back now. Okay, looks like it. Everyone's back. Okay, welcome, welcome back. Welcome back. You know, what's so now I'm actually crowd a question. Who wants to volunteer and talk about something interesting that they learned about someone else today? I'll pick volunteers. Don't don't try me. I'll pick someone. <laughs> I'll be y'all. I try to be all quiet. I'll pick somebody. I'll just pick out random names. <laughs> Well, I'll volunteer that that our group we just sort of chatted. You know, we didn't we didn't really spend a lot of time, you know, trying to to learn too much about one another. But uh, we, you know, we had a you know just kind of a, a nice time chatting with each other. Mm -hmm. So, mm. so it was more more a confession than it is a, a, a volunteer <laughs> of, of what we learned. <laughs> nice. Okay. Okay. So you guys, you know, chatted. That's cool. That's cool. But it looks like David, you raised your hand. Yeah. Um, so Bob was in our Bob Walthall was was in our group. And did I pronounce your last name correctly, Bob? All right, good. Um, and he spoke about um, how he's owned businesses and uh, convenience stores. And that's to me, that's really interesting because I, I, I can't imagine what that world is like and just, have, you know, having to be responsible for something like that. Um, so hearing his approach and his experience was pretty cool. Nice, nice. That's good, that's good. You know, who else? Anyone else was listening? Getting to know one another? Jennifer, what's up? Hey, I, I actually was listening. I'm just bad at retaining verbatim words. <laughs> so I changed it to my own interpretation. Uh-huh. 
And so my group did the same thing. We mostly conversated, got to know a little bit about each other. And, you know, we did target on that question about, you know, what would we change about the world? Um, but I, what I do remember, and, and I'm sorry, is it Darren? Darren? Yep. yep. You know, he didn't get his full, full, full moment in the sun, you know, so, you know, he, we ended with him. But I did get from him is that he enjoys people. His interest is people mm. and, and helping people with that forgotten dream. Mm. Am I getting it right? You know, because as we grow, we, we no longer believe in the unbelievable. We no longer believe that we can attain what our dream was once, once was. Mm. And so um, he works with people. Mm. And so that's what I get. Am I on the right track or did I interpret it incorrectly? Good, Jennifer. <laughs> okay, so, and, and, and I agree. I, the reason I remember that is that I do agree that often as, as kids or young adults, we have a certain vision of our life and what we want. But mm. as we get older, we start believing we can't attain that dream. Mm. And so um, for him to take an interest in that, you know, is something that stood out to me. And, and you know, it was almost always my dream to own my own business. So now I'm trying to do that. But um, while I was in the military, my dream became, I want to be a consultant. Mm -hmm. And then it narrowed it down some once I got into the to, to working in the private sector and in the public sector that I wanted to target the environment and culture and people. So when he started talking about people and their, their dreams or forgotten dreams, that stood out to me. Mm, that's that's absolutely amazing. That's amazing. You said you said that was Darren? Yeah. Okay. It, it, it's D-A-R-O-N. That's why I had to um, confirm yeah. the, the okay. pronunciation. Wow. Quick question, Jennifer. What, what area are you in? I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm in the Chesterfield chapter of ACA. I am an ambassador and team captain of the A-listers. Nice. And I've been with them for a year now. Okay. Okay. No, I just I just asked because you got you got a little speaker potential in you. <laughs> what I what I so what what I do for a living, guys, is I'm a I'm a speaker and I have a life coaching practice as well. And I and right now, like a lot of my, what I've been recently been doing is looking for other people that have that gift within them. And and I think about this is that like it'll live in us until like sometimes it takes someone else to help unwrap it. And girl, you got a gift that I just want to just tear up and just unwrap. Like you gotta <laughs> I just wanna I just wanna acknowledge you for that. Well, thank you. I appreciate you. No, so right now, if all of us can take a moment, um Take about, about a minute or two to go to the chat, put your first name, last name, um, first name, last name, what do you do? And then your email and phone number as well so we can all have each other's information. So first, man, some of y'all look like y'all won an Academy Award, man. <laughs> like some of y'all look like Grammy nominees. Like I'm like, we got some people up in here. <laughs> So now that we all have our information down there, it is time for the main event. So first thing I want to say is that this woman is a lady that I've had the pleasure of meeting years ago. When I first came to Kansas City, she was one of the first people I've met at a coffee shop. And actually, when I met her, she was reading an inspirational, loving poem to the room. And everyone was so captivated by her because she literally speaks from her heart. And so I'm wondering, like, what does she do? And it turns out that she's Wonder Woman. Like, she, she's the Wonder Woman. Like, so I, I, I'm like, I saw your movie in theaters. And so what does Wonder Woman do? She's an empowerment coach. She's a speaker. Um, she does a lot of life coaching as well. She's been on book tours all across the country. And literally, she's the kind of person that to get a hold of her for me, it's like, man, I got to like call her like consistently because she's always so busy. So it's really an honor to have her here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an interview style where I'm going to interview her, bring her up and everything. And right now, I want us all to unmute ourselves and please bring up the one and only Wonder Woman herself, Sarah Mingas. Please give up Sarah Mingas. <laughs> I, I don't like, I don't like, don't do the clap emotion. I want to hear y'all put y'all hands together. <laughs> Welcome, Sarah. All right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice dick. <laughs> First, Sarah, it's so amazing to have you. Um, um, I'd love to hear, you know, a little bit about you, you know, start off with, well, tell us a little bit about where you're from. Sure. So I grew up in Lincoln, Nebraska. Technically, I was born in St. Joe, Missouri, mm -hmm. um, but moved to Nebraska 
Okay, when I was six. And then when I was 19, I hightailed it to Knoxville, Tennessee mm -hmm. to go to um, college there. Mm -hmm. um, you may know my more famous classmate, Peyton Manning. Okay. Um, so I stayed there for six years and then I moved to the Kansas City area. Um, my dad is from here and all of his family is. So I've been in Kansas and Missouri for quite a while. Nice, nice. You know, from, from this area, you know, you know the area. I mean, of course, you got to be from the area that you're, you know, fighting crime in. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? so, so could you give us a, a synopsis of, of what do you do right now as far as Wonder Woman Rising? What do you do right now? Sure. So I have two coaching businesses. The first is co-parent and blended family coaching. Mm -hmm. I've been part of a blended family for over 25 years. So lots of help to struggling co-parents. Um, and then I also, Wonder Woman Rising is what I'll mainly talk about today. Um, and that's women's empowerment coaching. So I help women embrace their inner goddess by reclaiming their superpowers and their personal power and letting go of imposter syndrome and perfectionism and really loving themselves inside and out and having a joyful life. So that's what that's all about. I love that women's empowerment, helping with imposter syndrome, really bringing out the best of women. Like we like we need we need that. You know, now I mean, twenty twenty one, our women, we <coughs> all need the motivation. But I like that you're specializing in the area because, like, in a sense of time, we no one gets left behind. You know, so I want to commend you for that, for knowing the value you add, knowing what you want to do, and. I want to talk about, because what I do, um, I also do life coaching as well, but it, I, I like you so much because you was able to pivot from counseling to life coaching. So could you really go deep into that? Like, what's the difference between counseling, life coaching? What was your, um, what was your pivot like? And what's this play therapy? How was that in the past? Could you give us all of that, please? Sure. So play therapy briefly is using art and toys and games and music and sensory things to help kids, teens, and adults process their emotional stuff. Mm -hmm. So it requires having a master's degree in counseling or related field and being licensed. And there's more of a focus on diagnosis. Um, coaching and life coaching um, is actually an overlap in some ways. Um, it's very similar. We help clients clarify their life goals. We reflect feelings back to them. We help, um, we ask probing and exploratory questions to find out what really makes their heart happy and what they really want to see their life look like. So there are definitely some skills that can be used in both. And life coaches can't be therapists, but there's a trend of therapists then becoming life coaches because we can then serve anyone we want to across state lines versus being confined to state lines if you're a therapist. So those are some of the differences. Nice. That's really good. That's really good. You know, and so you, you distinguish yourself going from counseling therapy and now to life coaching. And would you say you experienced like a little more freedom with life coaching or tell me more about that? Um, yes. In fact, before I became a therapist, I was what you could call a life coach for parents, um, raising kids with special needs and emotional issues. So I've had about 20 years of experience doing that. And it, it was an interesting transition because so many people knew me as a therapist and they were shocked that I switched. And it was really just an extension um, and really catering to the needs of the clients I was serving. And I really pinpointed and focused on co-parenting families. And that has helped tremendously in helping to um, serve the clients I really want to and showing the value of, hey, this is my expertise and my area of expertise. Um, so it was an interesting pivot. I actually created a program and I call it the, the pause, pray, dash, play, pivot, and publish, dash, promote. And what that's all about is if you're not happy about going to work, you, you need to pause. And pausing is evaluating and assessing um, what's going on why aren't you happy and um, what's that all about. Mm -hmm. And whether or not what you're doing is really right for you. Sometimes that's praying to figure out how it all work out, but that could be visualizing success. That could be um, taking a break and just doing something fun and playful just to kind of give yourself a break to recharge those batteries and think about what really does make your heart happy and then pivot. And sometimes people don't get to that pivot stage because sometimes they decide, you know what? I've done this for a while. 
I'm done. I no longer am excited about this and that's okay. Um, so sometimes that happens for me. I loved helping people and that wasn't going to change. I just shifted how I was helping people and it allowed me to have the luxury and flexibility of being tr- able to travel and do the personal things that I wanted to do as well, which is write a book of poetry um, and then publish. If you haven't published anything and that could be a Facebook live, that could be a blog article, that could be a book, that could be doing a TEDx talk. If you have not gotten on a stage or done a video or published something, you are doing yourself and your clients a disservice because they need to know who you are. And that's the only way they're going to find out about it is if you are um, out there and telling people about who you are and what you're doing. Okay. So, well, first things first, you said you've been doing this for over 20 years. I'm like, how is that possible when you look 25? Second, um, you're, you're telling, so you're saying, because we all have business owners on here, and also we're streaming this live on Facebook as well, that they have, people have to put themselves out there to be seen. Yes. People have to put themselves out there. Um, what if someone deals with anxiety with, with posting on Facebook or posting videos? Or what if someone deals with like, kind of like, they kinda, they're, they're shy, like they know it's important for their business, but they're, they're just scared. How, how would you coach them? Well, I was, I used to be a painfully shy person who was terrified of public speaking. And then when I started my practice, I realized, oh no, I'm going to have to actually talk to strangers about what I do. Lord help me. How in the world am I going to do that? But because I believed in what I was doing so much and I got giddy with excitement and getting and visualizing the clients that I wanted to work with. I just um, faced that fear and started doing it. And the first videos weren't great. (laughs) The first blog posts weren't great, but you get better. And when you have a community that supports you, like the ACA and other groups, it's a whole lot easier to do that. Um, So it might be calling up 10 friends or or business owners saying, hey, I'm going to do this Facebook Live. Would you take a look at it or comment or post or something and let me know what you think about it. Um, That's a way to get that feedback from people that have your back or want to support and encourage you without it being so terrifying and worried of that you're going to forget. Mm, nice. Very, very good nuggets. Very, very good nuggets. You know, they got to put themselves out there. It sounds like put themselves out there to a community that they know and people that's going to support them. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend just, you know, just going to random people and just blurting out everything. Start with the people you know. Start with your community. Start with people that already love you. True story. The first person that heard my first motivational speech was my mom. So my mom, oh, baby, you the best. You the best, baby. Oh, you good. I'm like, yeah, I'm the man. You can do anything in your life, you know? And I was just saying whatever it is. So um, I like what you're saying, Sarah, that really focusing on first the community that's easy to, to publish to. And if you have people on your Facebook account that you're like, you know, that you don't feel like support you, why are they on your Facebook account? You know, like, like, like your social media should be your community, should be the ones that really support you so we can create that as well, you know? So fear is such a big thing I always talk about. So Sarah, like, tell me about your experience with overcoming fear of, you know, you said with your business ownership and, and that whole process, you know, give us that journey, that roadmap. So um, when I was in the fourth grade, my English teacher told me I would never, ever be a poet because my poetry did not rhyme or use iambic pentameter. Oh. My third book of poetry is coming out in a few months. So yeah. she really had no idea what she was talking about. But because I was a painfully shy, people-pleasing kiddo, I believed her. So for 20 years, I kept all my poetry under lock and key. And then I discovered this amazing poetry community in Kansas City. And so I slowly made my way up to the stage um, and performed poems that I loved. And um, there's something very raw and vulnerable about getting up on a stage and performing poems that you've written about your life. And all of my poems, every single one of them, they're like a bit of my soul and heart out for public um, display. Mm -hmm. So once I was able to do that and write a book of poetry, and then I had a sold out show, which blew me away. So once I did that, I felt like, you know, I'm Wonder Woman, I could handle anything you throw at me because I got up there and talked about what it's like to have a mother with a mental illness and talked about really raw things and people related to it. And once I discovered that, 
Like now, and I've been a business owner for 12 years. I've had people steal my programs. I've had all sorts of things happen, but now I'm kind of, you know what? Um, every successful person you will ever meet mm-hmm. is also an expert at failing. Because you cannot, Ooh. you cannot be amazing and wonderful if you get it everything right the first time. And I'm talking about Brene Brown will say that. My favorite poet of all time, Maya Angelou, also um, struggled with imposter syndrome. So everyone's got it, but it's about believing in yourself enough to get back up. And I've always known fundamentally, I was not born to sit in corners. I was born to do something amazing and wonderful with my life. Um, I had an older brother that had epilepsy. Um, He struggled and struggled. And in the areas he struggled, I excelled to the nth degree. So I've known that I've had something amazing inside of me that was really about inspiring others. And when I wrote the epic of poetry, I discovered my um, purpose in life was not to be a play therapist. It was to share my story and share stories that need to be told in the form of poetry and inspirational talks. And that was my life's purpose. So Mm -hmm. since I discovered that, like I, nothing really pays me anymore (laughs) because I know I can get back up. (laughs) Oh, wow. 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 So you're, you're, one thing that you said that really poked out, I want y'all to listen to this. Okay. Like successful people are really experts at failing. I think I think that was one of those nuggets where like if you can drop a mic, you drop it. Successful people are experts at failing. So if you're not successful yet, you're not failing enough. Oh. You're, if you're not successful yet, you're not failing enough. So how can you go out there and fail more, fail more? I mean, you don't go out there with the mindset and say, I'm going to go out there and try to fail. Try to do your best. But if you fail, just know you have to fail so many times to get to get to where you're to get to where you're going. You know, so I really want you guys to really, really focus on that. So Sarah, I think those are really, really good nuggets. Um, and and there's, there's something you were saying about how like you, you have a, a promotion code for ACA members and for, your, for what you do. Could you tell more about that and what offer you have for everyone? Yes, I have a couple. Um, so my normal rates, I'll just say, are 175. For everyone that is here today, I'm going to give 50% off if you contact me for a session and mention ACA. And then for people that maybe don't feel like they can benefit from their services, but would like to donate, I have some people that um, have been kind to make some donations recently. I thought I would kind of put that out into the universe. And for everyone that signs up and takes advantage of that 50% off, I will um, gift them a copy of Naked Toes, a signed autographed copy of Naked Toes. And I have a brief poem I would like to read that I think talks Failure and rising above, um, if we have time. Um, but yeah, so those are the um, things with that. I love to connect with people. Um, so if we haven't sat down or done a Zoom or anything like that, I would love to get to know you. I believe um, it's about giving first to get and having a reciprocal relationships. And I love to help people as well. Amazing, amazing. So the way you contact Sarah, look at your chat box, scroll up, and you'll see Sarah Mingus and you see her email right there. Just copy and paste that email to like a, a notepad or maybe an email and just, just email her to contact her because I can vouch for her. She's absolutely amazing what she does. And if you're trying to find that wonder woman or just that wonderful person inside of you, you know, it could be guys that resonate with you as well. Feel free to reach out to her, you know? So what we're going to close with is she has a poem that she's going to read. And, and I want her, you know, read this poem, give her all your attention. Let's, we get some, you know, we get, we get a little show up in here too. You know, we get a little poetry, poetry night, you know? And you know, when it's good, you... You know, you know what I mean? Yes. That's what poets do yeah, afterwards. They, they I, I went to a poetry night. Snap. Yeah, I went to a poetry night and do they finish? I'm like, and everyone's like, uh, I was like, oh, oh, I got a snap. <laughs> so if we can hear your empowering poem, please, Sarah. So it's in the book, Naked Toes. Um, briefly, my mom wrote an article about me when I was a year old that said I could be anything, do anything I wanted to be, even president, and it didn't matter that I was a girl, that all my doors should be open and not closed. So I wrote a love poem back to her in response. She had since passed away, but it's one of my favorite poems. So I want to read it, it's called Be Bold. Mm, mm. Be bold, she whispered, scribbled on the pages of her soul. 
Go forth and be, be you, my majestic creature, always be you. Break through that glass ceiling imposed on you by men. Wonder woman style. Follow your Irish wandering hearts. Let excitement flow through your veins. Eight parts poet, three parts extrovert, one part introvert, with a pinch of well-timed sass, and the Anderson clan stubbornness to run it all out. Believe and you shall receive. Do things I never dared to try. Keep making mistakes, for that is how you will learn. Never sacrifice or settle. You were destined for more. Be pleasing without sacrificing your spirit, your essence, your beauty. Love life for its exhilaration. Take the good with the bad. And sometimes eat cake for breakfast. Thank you. Oh, 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 snap, snap, my bad. My, my, I did it again. <laughs> See, it's like my reaction is just, <laughs> but I just gotta, wow. That was, that was absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Sarah Mingus, thank you so much, so much for your time. Remember guys, go to the chat box, scroll up um, and find Sarah Mingus and get her email, contact her. She's a resource for all of you. Her book's absolutely amazing. She out here, she makes me smile. She'll make you smile. She's absolutely the best. Thank you so much, Sarah Mingus. And what, and, and what I, what I want to do now is for everyone, everyone that's on this call, um, let me remove my pen. Okay. So what I want you, what I want you all to do is go, go, go back to gallery view. And, and I want you guys to one by one, you know, not everyone have to do it, but volunteers, tell me what do you experience from Sarah? What what's some takeaways you got from from Sarah um in her share at all? Feel free, like one one at a time. Who's who's going first? I'll go first. Okay. Oh, Ty, Ty, Ty Brown. Ahead, this this right here is, is is Ty Brown, who, my opinion, arguably the best DJ in the Overland Park, Kansas City area. He does events. He, 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 every one of my motivational events that was huge, he was the DJ, the sound guy, the sound engineer was there, made it sound absolutely wonderful. Like if you have any event, they got some music going, you know, put your dancing shoes on. He got the rhythm and blues. Ty Brown, take it away. Thank you, sir. Hey, um, yeah, one of the things I, I, I enjoy listening to Sarah is, is really overwhelming her enthusiasm mm -hmm. and that she just got an overall positive vibe to her persona which is uh, really, really neat. And it's inspiring as well. Mm -hmm. Good, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, my mom captured in that article how I had this adventuresome spirit and I really love, love, love life. <laughs> um, so thank you. I'm glad that came across. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Yeah. Nice, nice. David. Yeah, I was gonna, well, enthusiasm is important on a Monday morning. So thank you for that. Um, <laughs> and, it, you know, what stood out for me is when you, spoke about imposter syndrome, because I, I think to some degree, all of us have it, some more than others. And, you know, I just, I feel like you're kind of speaking to everyone. Um, yeah, because I mean, that, that's, a, that's a hard thing to grapple with. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Nice, nice, Thanks. nice. Jennifer. What stood out to me um, from just, Sarah's overall time speaking today is the same thing that stood out to you, Alan, is the, the, the every successful engineer, our, every, every successful person has had failure. Without failure, then, you know, being successful comes a little harder because failure to me are learning opportunities. So you fail, that's a lesson learned and you put it in your repertoire of lessons that you've learned just from living and trying to accomplish different things. So um, I just like the quote that she, she gave on, on failure. So, you know, you have to fail to be successful. Everyone that, that was successful throughout their entire life, when they finally get to a failure point, 
they don't know how to cope. Mm. So, mm. absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. We have time for one more, one one more reflection. I will. So, Dave. Yeah, but one of the things that stood out to me, um, Sarah, was, and, and you didn't specifically encourage this, but it, it was a message that came through loud and clear, I think, and, and that is to, to have courage. Um, you, you know, you stepped outside of your comfort zone to get up on a stage and, and read poetry, which was something that, uh, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, could have been terrifying for you and to, to have the courage to do something that was well outside your comfort zone gave you, um, you know, I, I think an, another level of confidence to, to do things that maybe you thought you couldn't do or you weren't prepared to do or equipped to do before that. So it's a, you know, I think that was a, a message. I, you know, I, I reached for my, my little rubber chicken that, that Brad gave me from last week after I did a one-on-one -on -one with him. And uh, so that I, I just had that, you know, that visual in mind of, of, you know, stepping up on stage and doing something you weren't comfortable with. And, and it reminded me of, of that, uh, that saying that when we, when we, step step up on a stage to, to speak to you know to a group we all have butterflies the key is just to get them to fly in formation and you've done that mm. thank you get, get your butterflies to fly in formation i absolutely love that absolutely love that you know so i just want to say that um this was this was our first one um aca live virtual coffee with a little motivation and i'm, I'm so glad that we started off with someone as amazing as sarah and um, some closing remarks I want to have for you all is that you guys are business owners, but you guys are also like potential world changers. So I want you to really keep in mind, what does it look like for you to make, because changing the world does not mean changing the world. You could change one person's world and it would mean all the world to them. You can make, you can hit one person and it'll mean all the world to them. You know, so think about that, really reflect on that. And if you want to review this at all, um, I'm going to take this recording and Facebook doesn't allow me to have more than X amount of friends. So I'm going to put this into the Lion Team. Um, I have a Lion Team group. If you just look up the Lion Team group on Facebook, you'll find the whole live stream there as well. Um, that's just a positive community, just like us all coming together. So take our times to really go out there, make an impact on others, do your best, be your best to be yourself. And um, let's, let's grow this thing, you know? Like right now, this is a little small positive community right here. And in my mind, I think the planet has the possibility, has the chance to be on the frequency that we're all on right now. You know? So that's all what it is. You know? so I, just, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone that came and to Alan. Alan is one of my favorite people. And I remember sitting down and talking with him around the same time we were both starting coaching businesses. And even when I'm, and I don't always see him, but he is great to run into because he <clears throat> has so much great energy and positivity and always has really exciting, fun things going on. And you know, someone who's really happy when they exude this energy, they could be wearing tennis shoes or flip-flops and a t-shirt and jeans, and they're still feel awesome and amazing and wonderful. And so I was very honored to um, come present today. And as I like to joke, I'm always here at the ready to answer the call for a fellow Avenger. So definitely thank you so much. And thank you for all the great comments. I hope to be able to chat with everybody. And St. Louis is on my list for some poetry readings later this year or next year. And I'd love to get over to Columbia and some other places as well. So thank you so much. All right, amazing, amazing. So that's the closing show guys. We're just under an hour. So go out there, make a difference, be yourself, and stay blessed. Peace out. Thank you, everyone.